Ready for some fun? What kind of fun do you have in mind? Spending the night in a haunted house! Yeah, right. And where do we find one? Well, it's not really a haunted house, but- Ha! I didn't think you'd know of one. Wrong. It's in your house, but you'll be in a museum. Hey, we've got a cool house, not a dusty old museum. I know, I know. I mean, in a museum on your PC, while playing Sierra Online's Shivers. You get to spend the night in a museum in the game. Or aren't you man enough? Wow, are you asking for it? Well, are you? You know I spend a lot of nights with my PC anyway. Yeah, I know you do. Okay, here's Shivers, and I'll see you in the morning. Okay, all set. Snacks, drinks, system up, installation complete. Now to get started. Let's see, great graphics. The sounds are excellent. Let's look around and start finding some clues. I can't stay where I am and hope to get through this thing by morning. Well, it's not the yellow brick road, but I'm off to see the wizard. Or at least get inside his museum. Now, what else is there to find? Yo, it's morning. How did it go? Oh, it was a long night. I didn't get much sleep. I played Shivers all night. I'm hooked. Looks like I'll be playing it through. Definitely not a one-session game. Come on in and let me tell you what I thought of it so far. You're on. Maybe there's hope for you yet. The story is interesting. It's about escaped evil spirits called Ixipai that have to be trapped in magic pottery. You have to piece together a pot and its matching lid called a tallyman. Since it's sort of a ghost story takeoff, it's easy to get really involved in the battle. I found that myself. The booklet that came with Shivers gave a brief history of the making of the game. It mentioned the story grew from the writer's interest in the unusual and supernatural. That figures. Why else would it be in a museum of the strange and unusual? At least it wasn't Madame Truffaut's. The graphics were excellent, both the usual, such as general graffiti, and the strange and unusual, like material from around the world legends. There were werewolves and vampires, but not one shot of Lon Chaney or Bella Lugosi. There was, of course, a winged horse and a cyclops. You knew there just had to be a few skeletons lying around, too. Of course, there were many other cool images, including some real, such as the Sphinx, and shots that reminded me of something from Easter Island or a Mayan temple. There was even an alien and its ship. Also, there were- Okay, okay, enough with the graphics already. But there were multiple levels and many rooms and hidden places. I said enough already! Well, Mr. New to Adventuring, how'd you like how the game played? I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't carry a lot in my inventory. I wasn't used to having only one item which had to be a pot or a tallyman or the united matching pair. It would have been nice to have been able to carry the pieces around with me. It made for a lot of painful backtracking. I know what you mean. They could have at least used what Mist did, a little lightning bolt that let you zap over to places you'd been to already. That would have saved me a lot of time. And my life as well. At least I was reincarnated, but the evil nasties rearranged everything I had found. That meant I had to start searching for everything all over again. Repeating all those stairs, halls, and redoing the elevator puzzles every time did get boring. Since this is the first of a new series, hopefully they will add something that will ease movement and inventory restrictions. Shivers has an interface which is very easy to use. I was a little miffed that I could only save 20 games, especially since I like to save games before and after I try things. That leads me to, I guess, my last couple of gripes about the game. The saved game description could only be eight alphabetic characters long. Can't describe much about what I was doing with that. Also, if I started a new game, it didn't give me a new player with another 20 saved games. It was added as one of the 20 saved games. That sure doesn't allow for family play. Okay, sounds like some good suggestions for the designers of any future installments. At least they did do one major thing right. They supplied a non-intelligent cursor. It makes you look at everything instead of highlighting only what's necessary. We seasoned adventurers enjoy finding items and clues without being led directly to them. Ah, maybe someday they'll have text or speech entry with great parsers, in addition to cursors for us golden agers. Viva la Colossal Cave! Now that you've gone on and on about the graphics and what you didn't like about the game, how about what you did like? You wouldn't have stayed up all night and said you were hooked on it if you didn't like it. That's true. There's a great feature that saves a lot of time going back for clues. On the control panel, Sierra provides us with a feature called Flashback. This lets you review clues you have found earlier. This way, you don't have to take a lot of notes from the books and clippings lying around. Unfortunately, it doesn't prevent backtracking for the pottery pieces. Well, there must be more than that. What about the puzzles, Mr. Puzzle Lover? Oh yes, the puzzles. Of course you didn't mention the puzzles that had to be solved just to get inside. 
like the combination lock, gears, Stonehenge Circle, finding lights, crossing the underground lake, and of course the elevator. They weren't bad, just a little searching and a little logic. You didn't just expect to walk right in, did you? This is an adventure game after all. True. Then there are some great puzzles inside. Elevator puzzles on each floor, some harder than others, spaceships to enter, doors to open, drawers to unlock, alchemy puzzles. Altogether, there are over 25 puzzles to solve. Some you need to search out clues to solve, others like the alchemy and elevator puzzles are just what they seem, puzzles. So what else did you like about it? Well, there is an element of randomness. The Ixapai didn't always attack from the same places, and once they did attack, they usually moved to another area. That kept things interesting. Anything else? Yeah, in order to catch one, you had to have the right pot tallyman combination in your inventory. If you tried using the wrong pot on an Ixapai, you had problems. And as you found out, this is a Sierra online game, and you can perish. And perish? Without the clues, you'd never know how many Ixapai you had to trap, what pots combined with what lids, oops, I mean, uh, tallymans, and which combos trapped which demons, let alone what type of place each demon liked to hide in. That's adventure gaming. Guess you finally expanded your horizons. Then there are many levels with many places to search through, and all those hidden rooms and mazes and... You're starting to repeat yourself. So you like Shivers. That makes two of us. I think Sierra Online will have another winner with this series. Hopefully they'll add in the little extras to make it even more enjoyable. Any more comments before you fall asleep standing here? Yes, I liked it. Yes, I think it will be a winning series. No, I don't have any more to say. Now go away! I'm beat. I must get to my room and get some sleep. Sweet dreams. Just forget about all those images from Shivers. Ha ha ha!